Number 5. Tiny Mummy Alien In 2003, researchers in Chile uncovered something bizarre that rocked the archaeological world. It was a mummified skeleton. That's pretty normal. Except this one didn't look even remotely like any other skeleton or mummy any archaeologist had ever seen before. This mummy was tiny, yet elongated, deformed in a way that almost made it look like the dried carcass of a fish more than anything that could have been human. The mummy was barely even six inches, and while it had some traits that made it look human, everything about it was wrapped in mystery. Making matters more puzzling was the sight of its uncovering inside an abandoned ghost town in Chile, untouched by humans for years, found wrapped in a white cloth and a pink ribbon. The entity was dubbed Ada, and was fascinating professionals and armchair alien enthusiasts who wondered if possibly the mummy could have been evidence of extraterrestrial life, making it the first alien mummy ever found. And there was even a documentary featuring her body suggesting her as an alien. Researchers wanted to DNA test a to discover just what her origins could have been, terrestrial or not. I mean, you gotta know, right? Eventually the DNA analysis would reveal the truth. An extract from Ada's bone marrow was used to conduct a study and was determined to be a human female. Now at first scientists were unsure about this because 8% of the DNA didn't match with human DNA, although later they determined this was because of a degradation in the sample. A later test would come in at 98%. And they discovered that the remains had a rare bone aging disorder that made the bones seem significantly older than the person they had belonged to. Bonitis, I think they called it. They determined as well that Ada's body contained evidence of several gene mutations to an extreme degree. I think you could probably guess that by looking at it. One researcher said, to our knowledge, no one has ever explained all of these symptoms in a patient before, and the changes in DNA or mutations reflect this. So yeah, Ada might not have been an alien, but the information in her DNA was definitely alien and unusual to the staff, who do hope that they can use what they've learned to put forward to help future patients. And if you're looking for more weird things found in the ground, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. We've got just about everything freaky that could be found under the sun and above it. We got cryptids, conspiracies, true crime, aliens, fake crime, you name it, we got it. So click on through, hit the bell, subscribe, and don't miss a thing. But do it after this video, okay? We got way more weird archaeological sites coming up for you. Number four, the mass execution. Now I imagine getting executed is probably Pretty scary. It might be nice to have a bit of company to do it with. Maybe 80 of my closest friends would make it all go down just a little bit easier. A shocking discovery in 2016 found at least 80 partially complete skeletons unearthed at an ancient cemetery in the Falron Delta Necropolis in Greece. Wow, that's a mouthful. Falron Delta Necropolis. I'm pretty sure that's where like you'd fight a boss. Now, 80 skeletons all in one place. That's spooky. But it's the fact that all of these bodies were bound by iron shackles that is bone chilling. Some are laid neatly in a row, others have their jaws permanently hung open in terror, you know, fun stuff. Archaeologists have a pretty solid theory that this was an ancient Greek mass execution. Now the head of the excavation at the site said they'd all been executed in the same manner, but buried with respect. Well that's... That's good. As long as you get shoved in the dirt with respect alongside 79 other people, no harm done, truly. They were all tied at the hands with handcuffs, and most of them were very, very young and in a good state of health when executed. Now they suspect they were executed, that much is evident, but eluding researchers is why they were executed. The orderly way in which they were buried and dealt with suggests that while they may have been a nuisance to someone, they were important enough to be treated with just a little bit of respect. Isn't that nice? One theory, and before we get into this, let me just say I love this theory, is that these were supporters of an Olympic champion named Cylon who staged a coup against Athens with the help of his father-in-law, the tyrant of Megara. Nothing to do with the hottie from Hercules and Hades. Now while Cylon Cylon managed to elude any harm that would come to him, it's possible that the Athenians who had pledged their support to him had to be punished, which is kind of all kinds of wild to me. Imagine if someone took your opinions about sports so seriously you ended up in a mass grave over it. We may never know why exactly these Athenians were shackled and buried, but we can speculate our best and that's always a lot of fun, isn't it? We love wild speculation around Top 5 Scary. That's basically the brand. Number 3. The Dracula Burials Are you afraid of vampires? I'm gonna take a guess that the answer is most likely no. What with vampires mostly being fictional, there aren't a huge problem in today's society. And if they are out there, they've learned to mingle among us and they're not bothering anybody like Nicolas Cage and Keanu Reeves. Are they vampires? I don't know for sure, but why don't they age? Maybe it's because we've taken care of the vampire problem that they don't really keep coming up. Take a look at this. A recent discovery in Poland had researchers shocked when they discovered a grave site 
that seemed like it was host to a vampire mass burial. Bodies were found buried with sickles placed around their necks or rocks lodged down their jaws in order to keep them in place should a possible reanimation occur. That just seems like good sense to be honest. Good built in insurance so they're not going to come back. Now we think of Dracula as the king of the vampires but the truth is stories of creatures of the night long predate the infamous count. With stories appearing across eastern Europe since the 11th century and newspaper accounts of the revenant creatures since the 17th century. Researchers analyzed fragments from the Drowsko Cemetery where this vampire masquerade was uncovered learning some interesting tidbits. The vampires DNA all suggested that they were locals and that their bodies had been laid to rest peacefully otherwise that there was no signs of a violent struggle or an altercation of any kind. This led researchers to suspect that these people had fallen ill to cholera and their symptoms had locals convinced that they might have been creatures of the night. Or they could possibly have been real vampires. I don't know if there is like a scientific test to determine vampirism. I don't know if you study that from the bones or anything. I think maybe you just hold a mirror up and if you can't see them back they're vampires and I think that's the scientific process. Number 2. The Skull Lake In 2009, archaeologists were excavating the bottom of a prehistoric lake bed in Motala, Sweden when they stumbled upon the foundations of a mysterious stone structure sealed at the bottom of the lake. Now if a little siren is going off in the back of your head, you're not alone. I feel like you and I have the knowledge to not open a mysterious structure sealed at the bottom of a lake but we can't all be as wise and as handsome as the top 5 scary audience. Well the researchers did some digging and uncovered something very bizarre inside the mysterious stone structure, namely animal bones, stone tools and the 8000 year old skulls of 10 people ranging in ages from very young to very old and then found an 11th skull buried within the ancient mud at the bottom and get this, like the world's worst kinder egg, they found fragments of another skull lodged inside the cranium of the 11th skull. It's a surprise, surprise for everybody. <laughs> that would probably be already horrifying enough to earn itself a place on this list, but I buried the lead here and neglected to mention that several of the bodies had stakes driven through them and had shown signs that they were burnt. Two of the skulls were found with stakes still stuck inside them and one stake had been completely melded with the cranium. And I'm not even done yet. What's most concerning is that the archaeologists who discovered the terrible bone nesting doll don't even really know what they found. They're kind of shrugging just like you and I are now. One theory is that it was a ritual site, perhaps where some dark rituals would have taken place. The pointed end of the stake was probably stuck in the ground and after the ritual was complete the rest of the bones were just tossed under the shallow lake. Now that doesn't really explain the conditions of things unless it was a particularly violent ritual. Uh, parts of a skull don't tend to end up in someone else's skull unless Something seriously rowdy is going on. Another possibility is that these were the remains of enemies and the stake skulls were brought back by warriors as trophies. Now this explanation is possible but no records have ever shown that the predator lived in Sweden and I think the predator is more of a skull hunting guy than any humans. Anyway, we may never know the truth behind this one and I'm going to be honest that might be for everybody's best. I want to sleep tonight. And number one, the HMS Franklin. Have you ever dreamed perhaps of sailing the world, going all master? and commander, discovering new lands with your comrades in arms under the mizzen mast. I wanted to be a naval explorer for years, unconcerned of the dangers of the sea. Well it turns out that the life aquatic is significantly more dangerous than the movies make it out to be and oftentimes you never make it home. In 1845, Sir John Franklin led two great ships, the HMS Erebus and the unfortunately named HMS Terror on a voyage to chart the Arctic. Franklin was a seasoned sailor and he'd already been around the Arctic two times already and thought he knew his way around an iceberg. Well, it's the Arctic and things, things happen, can't plan for it. That departure in 1845 would be the last time anyone ever saw any of those two ships for the better part of 170 years. The Erebus and the Terror both became trapped in ice and an unreasonably cold summer meant that they were trapped there much longer than anyone could have expected. In a desperate attempt to flee the situation, the crews of both ships evacuated and made a dreadful journey some thousand miles to the nearest trading port on the Hudson Bay. Now you don't need to be a historian. You tell me how you think this turned out. Well you can probably guess since they're listed as number one on a video about scary archaeological finds, the walk home didn't go super great. The bodies were eventually discovered, preserved in terrifying detail. Captain America, they ain't. Now the bodies were buried in permafrost, meaning they were preserved 
kind of like a mummy, but colder and way scarier. They look like latex Halloween masks, but they're real people. And where things get truly terrifying was wound patterns on bones nearby to the bodies that suggested when the crew got hungry, they started looking inwards for food, for long pork. Uh, if you are what you eat, then these people are humans. Uh, if the implication is not coming across just yet, I don't know if I can be any more subtle about it. Bones had been found cracked, the marrow empty, and knife marks on the bones suggested cuts like a butcher would have. The crew had run out of supplies and began eating their own, desperate to make it back, but never did. The lesson to be learned here? You can never pack enough trail mix. Always bring a second bag of that stuff. Bring some jerky before you have to start treating the cabin boys as food. Number five on this list is decapitated gladiators. Being an archaeologist must be very difficult because at one point finding the remains of a dead person could be a great historical find and at the other point you just found the remains of a dead person. Live Science says a set of skeletons discovered in York, England belong to tall men who died before the age of 45. What what makes them gruesome is that all of them had also lost their heads. Their heads were buried with them, sometimes on their chests and sometimes between their legs or feet. Researchers aren't sure why most of the skeletons at the Driftfield Terrace were decapitated. They date to between the 2nd and 4th centuries AD when the area was part of the Northern Roman Empire. Because most of the skeletons were particularly tall and showed signs of trauma, they may be the bones of gladiators. They might also have been military men. A genetic analysis of seven of the decapitated skeletons found that six hailed from Britain, while one may have come from Lebanon or Syria. As if being a gladiator and having to fight to the death for people's entertainment wasn't bad enough, but these poor buggers got their heads chopped off in the process. Maybe they actually got their heads chopped off in the gladiator ring. That was something that happened every now and again. When one clear gladiator won and the other had lost, they would finish them off by chopping their heads off. What's interesting is that these remains were found in Britain. Britain in that area wasn't necessarily necessarily known for having gladiators. That doesn't mean that they didn't have their own version of them though. It's very possible that hundreds of years ago they did and the tournaments didn't end up going in these guys' favor. Either way, a great and interesting find, but still super creepy. A discovery like this is the type that's usually accompanied by some type of ancient curse or something. Wouldn't be surprised if whoever dug these bones up is dealing with the ghost of a dead gladiator or something like that. Number four on this list is the pit of death. Anything called the pit of death does not sound like something I'd want to discover. Live Science says a property development project in France uncovered something truly shocking in 2012. A pit six and a half feet deep and five feet in diameter filled to the brim with bones. Even more sickening, the bones consisted of severed arms and fingers as well as the skeletons of infants, children, and adults. Researchers found at least seven upper arms including one from a young teenager. On top of the amputated limb, seven bodies had been tossed into the pit, including that of a middle-aged man who'd had an arm chopped off and suffered a blow to the head. These bones dated back about 5,335 years. We just had a big stew of bones going on here and that these archaeologists were unlucky enough to fish up. These bones would have been back in Neolithic times and were probably a byproduct of some type of warfare. The people who discovered them also theorized that this pit may have served as a justice system of some type. Like if you break the rules, then we throw you into this pit to die or something along those lines. Either way, discovering a big heap of dead bodies from thousands of years ago has got to be pretty terrifying. I don't agree with everything the legal system does now, but at least we don't need to worry about being thrown into a death pit somewhere. Number three on this list is the vampire burials. We've talked about vampires a lot on this channel before. Whether they're real or not is still up for debate, but these archaeologists have found some evidence to suggest that some people thought that they really were. Live Science says the real story behind Eastern European vampires is quite possibly creepier than the fictionalized tales of Dracula. Between the 16 and 1700s in Poland, some people were buried with sickles over their necks or rocks wedged under their chins. These precautions were taken to prevent the dead from rising again as vampires who, locals believed, would return to suck the blood of friends and family. In 2014, researchers found that the vampire burials at Drosko Cemetery in Poland were the bodies of locals who had not died of trauma. They were likely victims of an epidemic that would have felled them rapidly, the researchers told Live Science. So maybe vampires, maybe not. Either way, it's pretty scary 
scary. If they weren't vampires, then they would have just been regular people who got sick, were probably killed, and then had to get a giant rock shoved in their mouths when they're put in the ground. Creepy. But then again, if they are real vampires, then you just found some literal dead vampires, and that's not good for anyone involved. No matter how you slice this one, it's just kind of all bad. Kind of hoping that they aren't real vampires, though, because if they are, who knows if they're dead for good. We don't really need some undead vampires coming back to life and sucking all of our blood. Solid no thanks for me on that one. Number two on this list is cannibalism. Alright, so you're probably wondering, how did they discover cannibalism? Well, they discovered the evidence of cannibalism, and let me tell you, it's not pretty. Lip Science says, when Sir John Franklin and his crew headed off for the Arctic expedition in 1845, they hoped to navigate the Northwest Passage. They almost certainly did not expect that they'd be resorting to cannibalism within a few short years. The Franklin expedition's two ships, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus, became trapped in ice which failed to melt summer after summer. By April 1848, 24 men had died and the remaining crew set off in an attempt to trek to the nearest trading post. None were ever heard from again. Over time, the bones of some of the crew members were found. In 2015, researchers reported that the bones had been hacked and boiled, and many were even cracked to get at the marrow inside. The discovery speaks to the very desperate situation in which those men found themselves. You have to imagine yourself in that situation, and would you do the same? And that's it, guys. What would you do? It's the 1840s, you're freezing to death, you're starving, do you eat your fellow cops? Comrade? It's obviously a pretty brutal question that I think nobody wants to be forced to answer. The archaeologists saw the remnants of this problem head on, and I imagine it scarred a lot of them for life. And finally, number one on this list is Yan Shiwei. This is a tragic story of China's only female emperor, which was discovered by some archaeologists when they uncovered her tomb. Live Science says you work for years supporting the first female emperor to China and smoothing her rise to power. You break your own arm instead of fighting against her for a rebel army. You help her mollify civil disorder, and then your little brother goes rogue and gets you all executed. That's the sad story of Yan Shiwei, one of the favorite officials of Wu Zetian, the founder of China's Zhu dynasty. Archaeologists uncovered Yan Shiwei's 1300 year old tomb and discovered the tale on a stone inscribed epitaph. Yan Shiwei's little brother, Yan Shiwei, turned against Wu Zetian around 699. As a collective punishment, the entire family was executed and according to the carvings, carelessly buried. Wow, we got an entire Game of Thrones season out of this terrifying discovery. Apparently, the execution really wasn't all that nice either, folks. This discovery is truly a window into what life would have been like back in that time. It really was the Wild West back then and pretty much anything went. Pretty scary to picture how all of this went down, though. Who knows, maybe HBO will see this story's potential and put it on the screen for all of us. Kicking off at number five, The Pit of Arms, which is a pretty intriguing title, isn't it? If not, probably the best opening track to a death metal album. But as it turns out, this particular Pit of Arms is much more terrifying than the likes of Cradle of Filth or Job for a Cowboy, because it's exactly what it says on the tin, or the pit to be specific. Throughout the archaeological dig sites of ancient Europe, researchers have found numerous circular pits constructed in the same strange fashion dotted across the continent that all seem to date back to around, roughly speaking, 4000 BC. Most of them have left researchers pretty perplexed, but this one in particular, a pit found near the village of Bergheim in France that was filled to the brim with six adult arms, one child's arm, and random scattered hand bones. Also, the team of researchers on this mystery obviously had a sense of humour as they named their research paper a farewell to arms. So what were they doing there? Well, strangely enough, above the layer of arms and hand bones were the skeletons of the limbless victims, which seems to suggest these Neolithic victims were tortured and dismembered before they were later buried on top. It's left researchers pretty perplexed to say the least, but it seems to indicate evidence of organised warfare in the Neolithic period of ancient Europe, although no other evidence of conflict has been found to support this theory. And people have been digging in Europe for a long, long time. They could have been captured enemy warriors or they could have been innocent victims of a massacre. The only thing we can know for certain is their arms were thrown in a pit. And then they shortly followed. That's grim. Coming in at number four, Hearts of Lead. And yeah, 
pretty death metal too, right? I could release an album at this rate. In actual fact though, this entry on our list is possibly the most modern that we've ever covered, and yet it still dates back to over 400 years ago. Now, have you ever loved someone so much that you want to be buried with their heart in a lead urn for 400 years? And also, I'm quite concerned as to whether these hearts were given posthumously. I really hope they were. Well, as it seems, archaeologists from France's National Institute were extensively excavating graves for years at an ancient cemetery in northwestern France at the convent of the Jacobins in Rome, in one of the oldest preserved cemeteries in Europe. There, underneath the basement of the convent, they unearthed hundreds of burials, some of which dated back to the late 16th century, and five of which, strangely enough, were buried with the same familiar set of artifacts, a heart-shaped urn made of lead. Ah, that's cute, right? Well, after taking a closer look at these warm, fuzzy relics, it was discovered that they each had a human heart sealed within them. After more digging, it became apparent that it was all the rage for wealthy upper-class families to be buried with the literal hearts of their spouses and loved ones, and they were also so well preserved that scientists could scan the organs through MRI imaging to figure out what they died from. Nothing says I love you quite like here's my heart in an urn, right? Coming in next at number three, the Altamura Man. Now, dying alone is a terrifying enough notion, but how about dying alone at the bottom of a 26 foot deep well in the far recesses of a further 200 foot long tunnel system, only to be encrusted into a wall of pure limestone for over 150,000 years? Well. While you be perfectly preserved and your skeleton frozen in time for modern scientists to find you, that's also exactly what happened to one of our unfortunate Neanderthal ancestors, the Altamura Man. And his skeleton was so well preserved that researchers could even recreate perfectly how he would have looked way back when. And he looked like this. What a great looking fella. Hasn't he got the kindest eyes you've ever seen? Well, unfortunately, way back in 1993, when he was discovered by spelunkers in a karstic cave near the Italian town of Altamura, he was a little bit less kindly looking and instead resembled something straight out of a nightmare, petrified by stalagmites and sunken into the cave wall itself through thousands upon thousands of years of limestone droplets. I'm not sure what's more terrifying, the ultimate fate of the Altamura man or the fact that he was discovered when he was lost to the mysteries of the earth for over 150,000 years years by a bunch of spelunkers. <laughs> Next up at number two, Capacocha. Very little is known about the ancient ritualistic practice of Capacocha, and the earliest known written accounts were from the Spanish conquistadors in their observations of ancient Inca practices, documenting numerous accounts of child sacrifices where children would be led to caves high up in the mountainous peaks of the Andes region to give their lives and be reborn as gods and goddesses in their culture. It sounds like incredibly heavy stuff, and it is, but the practice of Capacocha was incredibly important to the Inca civilization, and it was considered to be the highest honor for members of their society. And although that's terrifying enough in itself, the method in which they were sacrificed is even more terrifying. Essentially, they were paraded around the kingdom with huge feasts held in their honor, where the procession led by the emperor would make its way toward the frozen peaks of the mountain over month-long ritualistic celebrations. There, the sacrifice was taken to a tomb and offered up to the gods, where the tomb was sealed over days with mounds and mounds of dirt. So the then when a group of archaeologists were surveying the region in 1999 at a site found near a volcano in Argentina, they unwittingly unearthed one of these tombs of legend, only to find a scene literally frozen in time. Three ancient Inca children perfectly preserved in ceremonious fashion down to the ice cold climate of the region. Whew, yeah, exactly. That's ancient history for you guys. And finally, coming in at our number one spot. Sacred Ridge. Now, if you know anything about Sacred Ridge, an ancient site in Durango, Colorado, you'll know that it's synonymous with one of the most grisly and violent atrocities in ancient American history. What was once thought to be evidence of a peaceful habitat of the early Pueblo culture, after closer excavation, it was revealed that Sacred Ridge played witness to a bloody and brutal massacre, given the fact that two of the excavated pit houses contained nearly 15,000 human body fragments belonging to around 35 separate people thought to be about half of the village's population. After analysis of the bone fragments, evidence of extreme torture and mutilation quickly became apparent, and it is thought that the massacre was part of a wider uprising in the Ridges Basin area sometime around the year 810. Now, the reason for this massacre will never be truly known, but the grisly reality of this discovery can only lead historians to study the archaeological evidence, which all points toward methods of extreme torture. After studying the bone fragments of 
the 33 victims' feet, researchers concluded that these methods of torture all bore the hallmarks of hobbling. Yes, hobbling, as in the excruciating action carried out by Annie Wilkes in Stephen King's Misery. It was thought that hobbling was used as a violent warning sign to other victims, but the fact that pretty much all of the bone fragments contain the same trauma marks only leads to more questions. Now, there are a multitude of theories surrounding the fate of the victims of Sacred Ridge, but it seems that the answer, whatever it may be, will be forever lost to the mysteries of time. Number 5. The Knife Blade Man Discovered in 2018 in northern Italy, a group of archaeologists were digging up a massive gravesite of the Lombardo, an ancient Germanic people. Found in a necropolis, which is a very fancy word for a large, elaborate tomb, and maybe one of the best words in the English language, the team found hundreds of skeletons that were at the site, including horses and greyhounds, and for the most part, you know, they're not particularly notable. You've seen one old bag of bones, you've seen them all. Except for one skeleton that in the place of a forearm was an impressive blade. Now this raises countless fascinating questions. Who was this guy? Was this the first Assassin's Creed protagonist? Some legendary madman of a warrior who lost an arm and thought, I don't know, put a blade on there, I can still fight. Well, the Lombardo people placed a great emphasis on war and combat in their culture, so it is possible. The researchers noted that there was a clear dated buckle around his arm, and pressure on the bones of his arm showed that it was an intentional prosthetic, right down to the wear and tear on his teeth, suggesting he tightened the straps for his head and blade with his teeth. Most of the other skeletons found in the necropolis all had blades buried with them at their sides, perhaps ritually out of honor, but this unique specimen had it grafted onto his arm like he's history's first cyborg or Baraka from Mortal Kombat. To be able to not only survive an amputation, pre-antibiotics and modern medicine is already impressive. And hey, if you're always looking to learn something from knife arm skeletons, then toss a subscribe our way. Top 5 Scaries always got a couple scary videos for you every day. Let's creep on creeping on. Number 4. The Hanging Coffins We're going up to China for our next one, specifically Hubei, China. There's a cave there that the locals call the Cave of the Fairies, and you've probably already realized that there's going to be a dark secret involved with the Cave of Fairies. We never talk about anything nice here. It was said that the mythical creatures were supposed to live in the cave, but those who explored it inside found that there wasn't much of anything living at all, instead finding something deeply disturbing. Rows and rows of coffins, some hanging from ropes, some jammed, wedged between the rocks of the cave. The coffins themselves were massive, weighing around 200 pounds each, and some destroyed and ravaged. Dating the coffins puts them at around 1200 years old, and are thought to have been put up by the ancient Bo people, an extinct culture hailing from China, famous for this unique practice of hanging coffins from caves. It's thought that this served two purposes. One, as a ritualistic offering meant to bless the dead, and two, from a practical, pragmatic sense it would prevent any would-be carrion eaters from picking through to get a meal. Fascinatingly, it can be seen that all of the coffins were carved from a single tree, one big, big log. One wonders if that was part of the ritual element of it. Now, The coffins being smashed is interesting, because the discoverers of the coffins theorized that the damage was actually pretty recent, dating it to the 1960s, and their prevailing theory was that someone wandered into this cave in a place of desperation and smashed the coffins to garner some firewood in the hopes that they could survive the night and not pass among the hanging dead. Let's just hope they didn't release any ancient curses at the same time. Number 3. The Black Sarcophagus Now you might have heard of this one before. If you were on Twitter much a couple years ago, maybe you remember vaguely hearing about sarcophagus juice. Maybe those words are ringing a strange bell. There was a pretty good petition going around to let people drink the sarcophagus juice. But boo, let's back up a bit. What is sarcophagus juice and where did it come from and why do we want to drink it? Well I've got the answers. Somewhat. I've got some answers. In 2018, a team of archaeologists digging in Alexandria, Egypt, discovered a massive granite black sarcophagus, which immediately set off everybody's warning signs that you should not touch that. People wondered what the 30 ton stone slab could be containing, with some even suggesting it could have been the mighty body of Alexander the Great. People warned the archaeologists that there, you know, could be some ancient evil, like when King Tut's tomb was raided and a very strange curse befell the explorers and excavators. Well, what they found wasn't a hidden curse, but honestly something stranger. Three skeletons inside the coffin, with a skull shattered by an arrow, and a whole lot of mysterious black goop or sarcophagus juice. So again, looping right back around it, what is the sarcophagus juice and does it taste good? Well, scientists analyzed the sludge and discovered that it was made from a combination of animal fats, tree resin, beeswax, and crude oil. The sludge has been recovered out of multiple coffins and sarcophagi, so it's not exclusive to this dreaded one. But that doesn't explain why this nasty stuff is there. 
Well, there's some theories about this, no concrete answers, but I'll do my best. It's said that when someone died, they become a form of the god Osiris, who is associated with death and rebirth. Osiris was called the Black One and is depicted with very dark black skin in the guise of a mummified body. As well, black is also a color associated with the deposits on the bank of the River Nile after a flood season. Fresh and fertile soil was seen as inherently regenerative. So it's theorized that with the linking concepts of Osiris and the regeneration of the soil, soaking and filling the coffins with this black sludge was a very confusing part of the mummification process. Number 2. Headless Vikings In 2008, a group of archaeologists Archaeologists were doing some fairly routine work in Dorset, a seaside town in England, in a rather dull job to improve local roads around the area. As could be expected, not too much of note was discovered, except for the mass grave of 54 headless Viking mercenaries. And not just were their skulls missing, but the rib cages, arms, and leg bones were all arranged neatly, surrounded by discarded teeth. No clothes or weaponry was discovered. So what happened? <laughs> because nothing my imagination is coming up with is conjuring anything good. Well, the bones revealed some fascinating finds, and I'll warn you now, by Odin's beard, they're all terrifying options. The teeth surrounding the grave were all filed down, but done neatly as if a craftsman had done it. Obviously, pre-Novocaine dental surgery wouldn't go down easy, so the process must have been excruciating, suggesting perhaps these men had had it done to them out of some sort of punishment, or they did it to themselves to frighten their opponents and show them just how strong they were. Neither one of those options is particularly pleasant to consider. But now let's get spine chilling with it. The archaeologists prevailing theory about what happened to this big Nordic pile of bones is that looking at the wound patterns on the ribs and the torso bones were smart, surgical, precise blows, not matching with a rabid hack job you'd expect from a bra. The archaeologists suggested that the Vikings weren't slain in battle, but rather offered up perhaps as some sort of strange, sadistic ritual, or perhaps a mass execution. It would explain why the men had no gear with them as well. The large number of bodies and intense cruelty of it suggests that there wasn't any trained executioners, leading to the prevailing theory that it's a dark, dark ritual. Number 1. Bog People Name one good thing that's ever been found in a bog. Need some help? There's never been one. For peat farmers in Northern Europe, it's a thankless life working in wet, muddy bogs and occasionally finding leathery preserved bog mummies. Due to the low temperatures, lack of oxygen, and high acidity of bogs, bodies found there are preserved disturbingly well. Well, preserved is a bit of a misnomer. They're twisted and rived, but they're intact, sort of. It's hard to think of these as preserved well because they look like the scariest things you've ever seen, but the process is weirdly fascinating if you're interested in looking up something disgusting. This happens all over Northwestern Europe, with no one specific case to point to. It happens happens all over Ireland, Germany, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and so on. The bodies range from anywhere as old as 8,000 years old preserved to the most recent appearing to have been from the early turn of our century. Now, no one really has any idea how many of these bog bodies could be out there, and no one really knows how the unfortunate bog victims ended up in their final muddy resting spot. Some of them could possibly have just been unlucky souls who found themselves lost and fell in. But another prevailing theory is that Roman Iron Age people in Northern Europe sacrificed people to the bogs, which sounds too dark to be real, but apparently is. They would also offer people as sacrifice or as punishment for their perceived social imperfections, which may I just say I am very glad this practice isn't commonplace because I would be cast into the bogs faster than you could say peat deposit. Kicking off at number five, the Falrion Delta Necropolis. Now Greece, of course, is the land of one of this planet's longest standing ancient civilizations and dig sites are a dime a dozen across both the rural and metropolitan areas of the country, slowly uncovering the mysteries of a long lost Greek society. While in early 2016, researchers discovered one terrifyingly unique manner of burial and mass execution. Apparently because, well, they're not entirely sure. Found in a large ancient cemetery in part of the Falrion Delta Necropolis, in Athens were at least 80 skeletons in a line stacked on top of each other with their wrists clamped together in a chain of iron shackles. The strangest thing was though that all of these men were incredibly young and in a very good state of health, indicating that they weren't slaves or common criminals and the orderly uniform way that they were buried seemed to support this. Whatever happened was an incredibly violent act with their hands bound above their heads before being uniformly executed. The whole thing doesn't really make any sense at all, but the leading theory is that all of these young men were part of an attempted coup during a period of great unrest for Athenian society. The coup failed of course, but the fact that these men were all buried 
in a respectful manner despite the violent circumstances that they were executed in leaves far more perplexing questions than it does answers. Swinging in at number 4, the Persian siege. Now in the ancient world, sieges and bloody battles were the only real way to get things done, but during an age where the most cutting edge technology was a composite ballista, it was pretty shocking when archaeologists discovered some startling evidence of chemical warfare. In 256 AD, well turns out that over 2000 years ago 19 Roman soldiers rushed into a cramped underground tunnel as they prepared to defend the Roman held Syrian city of Dura Ropus from an army of Persian soldiers digging beneath the city's mud brick walls. Instead of meeting a horde of Persian besiegers though, they were met by one soldier and then a wall of noxious black smoke turned their lungs into acid. They all died in excruciating pain sealed for eternity beneath the earth. But flash forward to the 1920s though and French archaeologist Robert Dumensil began excavating the Roman site that backed up against the Euphrates river. That's when he found the piled up skeletal remains of the 19 Roman soldiers and one lone Persian at the other end of the tunnel. Initially he thought that the Persian soldier had somehow managed to defeat 19 highly trained legionnaires in close quarters combat, but that's when he noticed crystals of sulfur and bitumen scattered across the tunnel walls. Turned out the Persian force had developed an experimental tar like petrochemical that burnt fast and hot and killed with deadly efficiency. Also turns out that chemical warfare was much more common than we expected in the ancient world. What a way to go, eh? Next up at number 3, the mystery of Herxheim. And this one is pretty damn terrifying really. Sometime in 5300 BC, which is a long, long time ago, what is known as a linear pottery culture developed in the southwest region of Herxheim in Germany, one that for all intents and purposes could be described as an idyllic peaceful stone age settlement. Safe from invaders and predators, the village thrived with its rudimentary agriculture and societal development. That is until sometime around 4950 BC when the settlement in Herxheim abruptly and without warning disappeared. But they didn't exactly disappear, instead they were ritualistically butchered, smashed to pieces and buried beneath the same dirt that they once called home. Turns out in 2009 an archaeological dig site unearthed human remains of over 1000 ancient villagers. The bones were of men, women, children, even infants and fetuses. Stranger still though, tool markings on all of the bones showed that the flesh had been carefully scraped off, while larger bones had been broken possibly to get at the marrow inside. Hell, even the skulls were cracked open in an effort to extract their brains. Whoever did this knew exactly what they were doing and were incredibly proficient at butchering the human anatomy, presumably to eat as there was no sign of the removed flesh in the surrounding area. It gets weirder though because after extracting DNA from their remains it turned out that these people came from all over Europe in roughly a 500 mile radius. In fact the leading theory is that all of these people volunteered to come to Herxheim on their own free will to be ritualistically sacrificed and then seemingly eaten. Yeah. Coming in at number 2, the tomb of the sunken skulls. Talking of ritualistic burial sites, there's an even older one and it's even weirder actually. Sometime in 2009 archaeologists found what they believe to be a stone age settlement near what was once a shallow lake in Matala, a town in southwest Sweden. The routine dig took a strange turn though when researchers discovered the skulls and skull fragments from 11 individuals including men, women, children and infants. In fact the site which would later be known as Canal Jordan turned out to be nearly 8,000 years old. But we also have to remember that Canal Jordan was a lake and the remains were found stacked inside a large stone mass grave with a giant heavy lid built on the bottom of a body of water. Hey, it gets weirder though guys because two of the human skulls found were pierced with wooden stakes with the majority of the others showing signs of also being penetrated by sharp objects. It seemed to point toward using their heads as some sort of bizarre trophy or totem them, but also it poses the question why would you then bury them underneath a lake in a stone tomb with children. But hey, again it gets even weirder because one of the female skulls found there was actually filled with fragments of bone from all of the other skulls in the tomb, like some weird kind of horrifying potpourri. The leading theory is that Canal Jordan likely served as a sacred meeting spot for several nomadic bands of Mesolithic Swedes roaming the forest and shores of Sweden over 8000 years ago. For some reason though they felt compelled to bury people's heads in a stone tomb at the bottom of a lake and no one really knows why. My best guess though, vampires or, or aliens, alien vampires. And finally coming in at our number one spot, 
the Clad Halan mummies. If you know anything about bog bodies, you'll know that they're already terrifying enough. The British Isles are relatively unique in the sense that they're littered with geographical peat bogs, a unique high acid, low oxygen environment which inhibits specific bacteria that break down organics. Because of that, they're also perfect for preserving bodies, and history has shown numerous instances of discovering ancient bodies hidden away in the deep peat bogs of Scotland, Ireland, England, and Wales. Well, usually they're just incredibly well preserved, mummified perfectly for archaeological purposes, but back in early 2012, scientists discovered two 3,000 year old Scottish bog bodies, remnants of the 11th century ancestral houses of Clad Halan, a prehistoric village on the Isle of South Uist. But hold on, because if that timeline isn't already peculiar enough, it gets weirder. Because first and foremost, researchers discovered that these two corpses had been buried between 300 and 600 years after their death. Hold on though, because it does get weirder, because these corpses quickly had scientists scratching their heads because their bones just didn't match up, although they showed clear signs of being articulated as one whole cadaver. Turned out after DNA testing each of their limbs, they were from completely separate people, all of which had died at different points in ancient history. It's what's called a composite mummy, and no one has any idea what the hell it was or still is, but for some reason, an ancient society was collecting body parts and sticking them all together in some horrifying Frankensteinian manner. <sighs> yeah, let that one sink in, just like a peat bog body. 